Spread.
Look at the face of anxiety. Look at the face of your situation that looks like a mountain and say, I speak the name of Jesus. I declare deliverance in the name of Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus in faith, you will experience the power. Let's not just speak the name of Jesus in vain, rather in faith. Declare it in faith with authority. When you speak the name of Jesus in authority, with faith, every chain will be broken. Every stronghold will be broken. Every anxiety, depression will run away. They won't be placed for discouragement, for failure, because there is victory in the name of Jesus. Let's speak the name of Jesus. Let's speak it because there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus.
for carrying my sins. Most gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you, Father, thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Father, for everything, Lord, for everything, Lord Jesus. Lord, you have been so faithful to us, oh Father. All through this time, you have been faithful to us, Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord. But I want to thank you for the blood shed on the cross, Father. Lord, I want to thank you for the sacrifice, O oh Lord. We are here in your presence. Jesus, only because of the sacrifice, O oh Lord. We remember, Lord. We remember every day of our lives, Father. Every day of our lives. We want to remember that the cross, Father, Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, the price you paid, O oh Father. You loved us. You loved us, Father. Even when we were sinners, while we were still sinners, you loved us. Here we are in your presence, Father, Lord. Lord, I ask, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you help us, oh, Father, to move forward in your grace, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you've been so good to us, oh, Father, especially, Lord, you've been with us in this worship you have been oh Lord Jesus about accepting oh Father our offering which we give to you this humble offering we believe that oh Father that you have accepted it Lord Jesus Lord let your name be glorified oh Father let your name be magnified oh Lord oh Lord I pray for everyone who is watching this oh Father you bless them oh Father Lord. you bless their lives oh Father Lord, as we are all going to listen to your word, Lord, you speak through your servant, O oh Father. Lord, you talk to him, O oh Father. You talk through him, O oh Lord. We need your word, Father. We need your word, Jesus. Oh Father, speak to us. Speak to us, mighty Lord. Pray for everyone who's watching this online and offline, O oh Father. You bless their lives, O oh Lord. Lord, let them submit their lives once again to you Father Lord so that you cleanse them oh Father you wash them oh Father Lord Jesus Lord I pray that oh Lord you deliver everyone oh Father Lord from every every sickness and pain of this world oh Lord physically mentally spiritually I pray health on everyone oh Father Lord. pray for your guidance oh Father and your mercy You've been so good to us, O oh Father. Till this moment, you've been so good to us, O oh Lord. Lead us and guide us, O oh Father, Lord. Help us to move forward, O oh Father. Without you, Lord, we cannot even put a step forward, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We want to live alongside you, Father. Lord, we want to live with you, Lord. We want to, oh Lord, spend our lives with you, Jesus. Father, Lord. Draw us close to you, Father. Draw us close to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Father. Submit each and every one, especially those who are here with us in this worship service. The youngsters, you bless them, oh Father. Lord, you anoint them, Father. Use them for the expansion of your kingdom. Give it all to you, submitting each and everything into my hands. In Jesus' name I do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining this English worship service. I hope that you've been blessed through the worship today. The title of today's sermon is, It's Time to Cross Over. God has led the people of Israel out of Egypt and he's leading them into the land he has promised. Now in Joshua chapter 3, we see that in order for them to enter into the promised land, they first need to cross the Jordan. Today, it's the same thing to us, for us. In order to enter into the promised land that God has given us, we need to cross the Jordan that is there in front of us. 
if we are not willing to cross the jordan there is no way there is no other way that we can enter the promised land into the promise that god has given us so today if you desire to enter into the promised land today you need to desire to cross over the jordan and in joshua chapter 3 we see god is teaching the people of israel how they could cross over jordan he's giving them some instructions and i pray that through those instructions we would learn how to cross over our jordan and enter into the promised land that god has given for us into the promises that god has given us in joshua chapter 3 verse 3 he says giving orders to the people when you see the ark of the covenant of the lord your god the levitical priest carrying it you are to move out from your position and follow it so the first point for today is watch and follow this is what god is telling them see what you need to do how you're going to cross jordan is you're going to watch me and you're going to follow me the people of israel were traveling through this desert and all this while they moving out or settling in was completely dependent on the presence of the lord when the presence of the lord rested they came to rest and when the presence of the lord left that place or moved up they started packing up and they would just move sometimes the presence of the lord settled there for a year sometimes for a month a week or a day so it simply it simply it was very simple for them they traveled when the presence of the lord traveled in front of them and they settled when the presence of the lord settled among them and they were simply to continue doing that that is continue watching the lord for them it was not depend on the political situations it was not dependent on on the economic situation it was not dependent on their physical condition or what was going all around the world it was simple what and where is lord leading us how is the lord leading us and where is he leading us and even today it's it, it, that's the same principle and that's what we need to do to cross our jordan is to keep our eyes on the lord watch for the lord every day we are so busy in our works in our business in our day to day life we are very busy in all that busyness we are making many crucial decisions we are making decisions whether to move forward to do some things or to stop doing some things invest somewhere start doing something new a number of things and it's important that we keep our focus on the lord that we do not forget focusing on the lord as we are so involved in our lives but what we need to do is be focused on the lord fix our eyes on the lord and and see what the lord wants to do uh, where or see where the lord wants us to lead us in every day every day we might be doing a very small work or very big work it's very important that our eyes are focused on the lord see this is what i feel like i want to go but what is the lord says what does the lord says where is god leading me so this is what i this is what the political situation around me suggests that i need to be doing or this is the economical condition or situation that i'm in and i am in right now this is where it is leading me but at the same time or as a christian it is even more important that we be focused on the lord because sometimes the lord leads us completely opposite to the kind of situation that we are facing in because your situation that you are facing right now might be suggesting you to stay put but but it might be that the lord is asking you to move forward so it's very important for us the people of god to be focused on where or or become really focused on god to see where the lord is living it leaving us leading us or to see where the lord wants us to go to whether to start our journey or to stop so it's so important that we focused on god and it's not simply being focused on god it's important that we follow god 
it's one thing understanding what the lord wants us to do it's one thing understanding what the what the word of the lord is teaching us it's one thing of hearing his word but it's a very much important thing that we obey god's word obeying is even more is is such is so important because so many times we are we are, we are so enthusiastic and so happy about what the lord has told us and what the lord how the lord has been speaking to us but something needs to be done that's a response and that's that's even more important so you we need to watch the lord and the second thing we need to do is we need to follow the lord we need to be willing to follow wherever is taking us whichever direction is leading us see numbers chapter 14 in in verse 10 and verse 12 this is god uh talking to moses and verse 11 god says how long will these people treat me like with contempt how long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the signs i have performed among them i will strike them down with a plague and destroy them but i will make you into a great nation so this is what this is god this is god speaking to moses and telling moses I'm done with these people because they're not willing to follow me. Here is Joshua, here is Caleb with a very good testimony that we can we those people are big as a big country is a big place, it's a good place but with God on our side. We following God has led us all the way here, has given us so many victories and that's what God is going to do. He's going to give us victory even here. so let us follow god but the people of israel were not willing to follow god so god said if you're not willing to follow me i don't find any point of calling you my people or you calling yourself my children and my people it doesn't make any sense if you're not willing to follow me and then they repent and 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 in and they react in a very their response is is to the other extreme in numbers 14 was 40 this is early the next morning they set out for the highest point in the hill country saying now we are ready to go up to the land the lord has promised surely we have sinned but moses said why are you disobeying the lord's command this will not succeed do not go up because the lord is not with you so be when god told them to go he said follow me they said no we're not going to follow you this is this is too dangerous this is too it's too dangerous to follow you god i might lose my life and if i lo- lose my life what's going to happen to my wife what's going to happen to my kids lord what you're asking me to do is is very impractical right now what would happen to my job what would happen to my business what do what would happen to my life my future that's the kind of questions we ask god where we know that god wants to go that way god wants us to go that way we know that god is leading us in a particular way and god wants us to take up something but we understand that we see that but we are not willing to follow god and later they realize oh we made a big mistake by not following god and now they think let us go into war It's not a point about going to war or not going to war. It's a point about are you following God? And that's what Moses is telling them. Why are you disobeying God again? When God asked you to follow him, you did not follow him. And now he didn't ask you to go into the battle and you're going. And they went. And what happened? They were defeated. because they did not follow god when he asked them to follow god and now they were just running by their emotions rather than following and waiting for the guidance of the lord they were not watching and they were not following and today if you and i need to cross this jordan into the promised land what we need to do what we need to do is we need to watch god and we need to follow god and let's come to the second point what else do they need to do to cross over the jordan so that they could enter into the promised land in joshua chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 then you will know 
which way to go since you have never been this way before but keep a distance of about 2000 cubits between you and the ark do not go near Joshua told the people consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you so now if you need to cross the Jordan there you need to watch the Lord you need to follow the Lord and the second important thing that you need to do is you need to consecrate yourself you need to consecrate yourself you need to become a holy people. We need to be people who are set apart from this world because we have been set apart from this world by Jesus Christ. We cannot simply compromise with the sins of this world and expect God to lead us into the promised land or through the Jordan into the promised land. God is ready and he's willing and he has a plan. And his plan is to, is uh, for you is to cross the Jordan, enter the promised land. And have a beautiful life, have a blessed life. But for us to experience that, first we need to do is, we need to consecrate our lives. If we continue to live a life of sexual immorality, if you are living in fornication, if you're living in adultery, if you're, if you're, if you're indulging yourselves in the sins of this world and expecting God to lead you into the promised land, that's not going to happen. That's not how it works. We need to consecrate ourselves because he is holy and he wants his people, us who are called by his name, he wants us to be holy because he is holy. And, and the best and the beautiful thing is he has made us holy. It's not that we need to become holy. It's not that we, by our, our practices, by our, by our ways, uh, uh, by our efforts, we could become holy. But it's he who made us holy. He made us holy and he wants us to live. like He has separated us from this world. He has consecrated us. And now he wants us to live in that consecrated life, to continue being a people separated by the Lord. He has given us that righteous white robe. He doesn't want us to go and jump in, in, in the mud again. He doesn't want us to soil ourselves. It's, it's so simple, right? It's so simple. If we need to experience the blessings God has given and has in store for us. And if we need to cross this Jordan. We need to consecrate our lives. You need to, you need to be consecrated in your thoughts. You're consecrated. Your eyes need to be consecrated. Your ears need to be consecrated. Your hands need to be consecrated. Your mouth needs to be consecrated. Your, your body needs to be consecrated as a temple of God. Unless and until that happens, there is no way that we can expect to cross over the Jordan by the miracles working of the Lord and enter the promised land that God has in store for us. So the first thing we need to do is watch and follow the Lord. Second thing is consecrate. Third point is Joshua chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. See, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose 12 from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the, uh, the Lord of all the earth set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So this is Joshua explaining to the people of Israel what is going to happen when they set their foot in the Jordan. It didn't happen yet. This miracle is yet to take place and before, even before it takes place, this is what God is telling them. When you set your foot in the Jordan, the water will start flowing there is a miracle that's going to take place. The reason why God gave them this much of information, even before they started their journey towards the Jordan, was God wanted his people to expect a miracle. He wanted them to start packing their bags with expectation. They, God did not want them to start packing their bags like any other day. 
go ahead like any other day, do things like any other day. He wanted them to step foot with expectation, with faith that God is going to do something new today. In order to experience a miracle, you need to expect a miracle because miracles don't happen by chance. It happens by faith. If you are expecting miracles to take place in your life by chance, it's never going to happen. It's as simple as that. If you want to experience miracles in your life, you need to expect a miracle in your life. Every time you sit to pray, you expect a miracle in your life. Every time you go enter into the presence of the Lord, you expect a miracle of the Lord. You expect the voice of the Lord. You expect the touch of the Lord. You expect the anointing of the Lord. We're going to church. We're going to, we're going to pray. We're going to read the word. How? The, it's, we're going to do it. That's good. But even how is important. Is it? Is it? Just going with the flow. I go to church every Sunday, so let me just go to church. Or I pray every day, so let me just pray. It's good that you pray. It's good that you go to church. It's good that you have fellowship. But it would be great if you had, if you start expecting a miracle in your life. The blind man came to Jesus and Jesus asked, what do you want? What do you mean, what do you, what do you want? I'm blind, yes, but still what do you want? Because the blind man has been begging all his life. He's been begging for clothes. He's begging for food. He's been begging for money. Now he comes to Jesus and Jesus asks him, what do you want? Because what you want, can, I do understand, but it cannot happen by chance. It's not like you're begging and somebody by chance throws in a gold coin. Or somebody by chance gives you a fresh pair of clothes. It's not something that's going to happen, happen by chance. It's a miracle. And that miracle happens through faith. And the blind man said, Lord, I want, I want to receive sight and I believe that you can give me sight. That's right. Now you're expecting a miracle. You have faith and that's now you're going to experience that miracle of the Lord in your life. If you're listening to this sermon today and you are waiting for a miracle in your life for many, many months and years and you've not experienced the miracle yet in your life, let me ask you, every time you enter into the presence of the Lord, are you, are you expecting a touch of the Lord? Are you expecting to hear the Lord's voice? See, I, when I say miracles, I just don't mean, I just don't mean some, just a physical healing, a financial blessing, all of that is there. But I believe us hearing the voice of the Lord in a very special way, in a very specific day that day, would itself be a miracle for the miracle that we need in our life that day. You might be you might be disappointed. You might be you might be going through a very tough period of time. But that day, God speaking to you, pinpoint on the situation that you're going through, through the word, through someone else, it's a miracle. Because that's, that's like living waters. That's going to refresh in you. That's going to give you the strength to go forward. So every time you come into the presence of the Lord, expect a miracle. Every time you sit to read the word, expect a miracle. Every time you go into fellowship, expect a miracle. Because that's where you can experience a miracle in your life. So then you can cross the Jordan. And then you can enter the promised land. Three, three secrets to cross the Jordan. The first one is, the first one is watch and follow. The second point is consecrate yourself. And third one is expect a miracle. So let's do that. Let's watch the Lord. Let's follow him. Let's consecrate ourselves. And let's expect. Let's, let's, let's have a life of expectation. Let no one water down your expectation in the Lord. Let no one water down your expectation of a miracle in your life. Let us experience the special anointing and the special leading of the Lord so that we can cross over the Jordan into the promised land. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. 
Lord, I thank you for these words that you've set before us. I pray a blessing upon every person who has been part of this worship service, O Lord. Lord, whatever they're going through right today, Lord, they might be facing a Jordan. I pray that you give them the faith, the faith to expect a miracle. Lord, and I pray that you speak to them so that they could consecrate yourself and teach them to follow you, Jesus. Lord, I pray a blessing on every person who's been part of this worship service. I pray a blessing on every person who has dedicated their lives and made a decision to follow you today or to consecrate their lives today. And I pray that you strengthen their faith that they would expect a miracle in your presence. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Teach us to go forward for you. Let your will and your purpose be done in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining this worship service. I hope you've been blessed. Please do share with your friends so that they too can be blessed. Thank you. Praise the Lord.